Welcome to Western Vascular Institute. I'm Dr. Vranick, and today we're going to discuss varicose veins and venous insufficiency. So you might want to ask yourself, what is venous insufficiency? Venous insufficiency is when the veins over time become dilated and stretched out where the blood is pooling in the lower aspects of the legs and therefore causes symptoms. What are the causes of venous insufficiency in varicose veins? The number one thing that we see clinically is a strong family history for varicose veins. Mom or dad have them, grandpa, gran grandmother have them, and typically that's passed on to the kids and when they reach a certain age they can become symptomatic and start showing signs of dilated veins in the legs and having symptoms. Other causes are advanced stage. The older we get, our veins tend to wear out and they become dilated. If you had a previous history of a blood clot in your lower leg veins, that can damage the internal aspect of the veins or the valves in the veins and can lead to venous insufficiency or dilated veins and pooling of blood in the lower legs. Being pregnant it causes quite a bit of pressure in the superficial leg veins and can lead to varicosities. And being sedentary or standing all day such as cashiers or bank tellers or even vascular surgeons. I'm starting to get varicose veins after operating for 25 years. So what do we do for the workup? The workup is typically a good physical exam. We, we look at the legs, we look for the typical signs and symptoms of venous insufficiency and varicose veins. And the most important is an ultrasound. That's kind of what I want to go over with this graphic here. What we look at with ultrasound is dilated veins and valve function. So this is a typical normal healthy vein in the leg. These little structures in the middle here are valves and they're located at various areas throughout the segment of the vein in the leg. Normally the blood in the lower leg goes through the normal vein, through the valves. The valves open, let blood back up to the heart and then the valves typically close and prevent blood from pooling down in the leg when we're standing or sitting. So it, it, it it prevents gravity from making the blood pool in the lower leg when you have a healthy valve. So what ultrasound shows us is typically dilated veins like this with valves that are not functioning properly. They could be bent, they could be worn out, or the vein itself can be dilated and when we're standing and sitting, you know, blood wants to go back up somewhat because the muscles in the legs are contracting and that causes a bellowing effect, what we call the calf muscle pump. That helps to return blood back up to the heart, but because the valves are not functioning, they can't close properly, and therefore blood will typically tend to pool in the lower legs, and it therefore leads to the symptoms. Uh, some of the symptoms are gonna be swelling, chronic swelling, even pitting swelling in the lower legs, pain, achiness, throbbing, restless legs, uh, fatigue in the legs, uh, brown discoloration in the legs because when the blood is pooling in the lower legs, blood has iron in it. And when, it's, when the blood's not moving out of the leg veins sufficient, sufficiently, the, the iron can be deposited onto the skin and you get that brown appearance in the calf area. Sometimes you can get what we call venous ulcerations or wounds around the ankles and that's when there's so much gravitational force and pressure on the leg veins due to these stretched out veins where blood is just pooling all the way down to the ankle and causing erosions of these veins through the skin and leading to a wound. And sometimes these can take quite a long time to heal up. So what are the typical treatments? In the past we used to do varicose vein stripping. It was quite a morbid procedure. You would have to go to the hospital for that. Uh, general anesthesia is typically involved and we would make an incision in the groin and around the level of the knee and pass a, a wire with a washer on the end and essentially pull that vein out and tie off some branches in the, in the legs. That's not done very much anymore because of technology. Other treatments are laser uh, insertion into the vein where it's a heat source, kind of closes the vein and uh, prevents the valves from being stretched and the veins from dilating. Uh, other therapies such as the one we're going to do today is radiofrequency ablation. Uh, that's where we pass a catheter into the dilated vein and then we have a heat source element here at the tip of the catheter reaching a, almost 300 degrees Fahrenheit and it just contracts and burns the vein into a little fibrotic core therefore getting rid of the dilated vein and the incompetent valve problem. We also 
can add other treatments in conjunction with either laser or radiofrequency ablation, and that includes sclerotherapy. And sclerotherapy is essentially medication that we put into a syringe with a very tiny little skinny needle, and we can inject these varicose veins that are bulging throughout the legs or around the ankle, just topically and visibly with the special little light we have, and put the medicine into the vein, and the vein uh, essentially dies from within due to the medicine damaging the internal lining of the vein. So part of the workup for venous insufficiency and varicose veins involves a physical examination to evaluate the, the lower legs for swelling or skin discoloration. And most importantly, a big component of the workup involves ultrasound. So I kind of wanted to show you what we look for on ultrasound. So here's a schematic of the deep veins and the superficial veins. This long parallel vein right here is the superficial femoral vein, and the ones that we're particularly interested in are the superficial veins. Those are the ones that become diseased or dilated or non-functioning or varicose or bulging veins. And these are the greater saphenous veins, which courses from the groin along the inside of the thigh and all the way down the inside of the calf to the ankle. And then on the back of the calf, it's called the small saphenous vein, or we call it the lesser saphenous vein. This vein can also become dilated. So when we're doing ultrasound, we're looking at the vein and looking at the, the diameter of the vein and the function of the valves inside of the vein. This is a normal healthy vein valve and a normal sized vein. It's not dilated, blood goes from the feet and calf through this vein up the leg and then the valves open and close to let blood through and then close to prevent blood from coming back down towards the lower calf or the ankle when the patient is standing or sitting. This is a diseased vein it's dilated or varicose. These valves are kind of bent. They don't touch each other. So when the patient is sitting or standing, blood is trying to get its way back up towards the heart, but the valves are in an open state. So the valves are not closing and preventing blood from uh, coming back down towards the leg. So th this is a diseased uh, varicose vein and a valve. So the veins that we treat are the superficial ones. This is the skin right here. Just draw a line there. And this is a superficial vein. So we can pass these radio frequency catheters up these dilated incompetent veins through these diseased valves and obliterate these veins here. Also, there are communicating veins that become incompetent. These are called perforator veins. They're kind of like the, the steps of a ladder where the one side of the ladder is the deep vein we don't treat those, those are permanent veins that you need. Superficial veins, the other side of a ladder, and the steps are the perforator veins. They can also have incompetent valves, they can become dilated to where when people are standing or sitting, blood will go the wrong way through the deep veins and through the perforator vein and get into the superficial system near the skin and can cause bulging varicose veins. So this is another vein that we target uh, with ablation. Uh, we don't use this particular catheter. There's a needle with a, uh, a ablation tip on there and we, we insert an ablation catheter into that vein and we burn and ablate the inside lining of the, that vein so there's no more communication from the deep veins to the superficial system. Now we don't treat the deep veins uh, and there's a reason for that. I mean those are permanent veins. Those are veins that are located deep in the muscle. They drain the majority of the blood volume out of the leg now the deep veins can become incompetent. Uh, they also have valves. Um, we have tried procedures in the past. You know, when I started my residency in the early 90s, uh, we used to do little stitches into these valves. And let's draw it in there. And these little stitches we would call valvuloplasties, where we would tighten up the valves to see if that would help with the function of the deep venous valve. And none of those procedures actually worked. There was only one or two surgeons in the world that actually had good results with that procedure. And after a while, their patients also didn't have the best results. So essentially that procedure was abandoned in the early 90s. We also tried percutaneous valves where we'd go through the skin with a wire and we would put little metallic valves in segments of diseased uh, deep veins where the valves were not functioning. And those metallic valves didn't work either. They actually caused more problems such as blood clots in the veins. So no matter how creative vascular surgeons have been over the years, uh, from the 60s all the way up until about the 90s, 
not much deep venous system work is being done. So the main treatment for isolated deep venous insufficiency is really leg elevation, exercise, and the use of compression stockings. What we do like to target though is the superficial veins like we discussed and the perforator veins with radiofrequency ablation techniques.